Welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. This is local talk radio. A couple of different ways to get on the program today, as always. You can participate the old-fashioned analog way by calling in at 458-TALK, 458-8255. Those of you who are listening in other states, that you put a, throw, a 907 on front of that. Also, you can listen online at KFAR660.com, and you can sound off in our chat room there as well. Or send us an email to the Patriots Lament website, and uh, we've got that there at PatriotsLament at gmail.com, or check it out online at Patriots Lament uh, on uh, Blogspot, which is PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. All right, we got all that under control. Uh, welcome to the show, of course. Joining us in the studio, the Bennett brothers. We've got Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises, Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical. Those are the two sponsors of the show. Also, we've got Dave Giesel in here from the uh, Campaign for Liberty right here in the Fairbanks chapter. And uh, that's the, the Ron Paul people. So now you know exactly where we are aligned. If it has to do with preserving liberty or stirring things up, and getting people to think about it. Obviously, that's what we're all about here. Uh, you wanted to start the show off with a song this morning. Is that right, Josh? Yeah. All right. Let me see if I can get that queued up and ready to go here. Oh, was it Caesar Chavez or Rosa Parks that day? Some say Dr. King or Gandhi that set them on their way. No matter who your mentors are, it's pretty plain to see that if you've been to jail for justice, you're in good company. Have you been to jail for justice? I want to shake your hand. Just sitting in and lying down are ways to take a stand and sung a song for freedom. Oh, march and make it a line. Have you been to jail for justice? Well, then you're a friend of mine. All right, that's the uh, song, Have You Been to Jail for Justice, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Uh, what is that, sitting in or lying down or ways to take a stand? Unless you're in Anchorage. Unless you're in Anchorage. Right. <laughs> that's right. Well, you'll go to jail. That's right, you will go to jail for justice. Now, uh, the reason why you brought this up is that there's a, a friend of ours, uh, Mike Anderson, who is in jail right now. And uh, basically is being held, um, well, you think unjustly. Explain. Oh, absolutely. I would see as a, uh, right now I'd see as a political prisoner. I don't see it any different than uh, any other country that we look down upon in history right now. I don't see it any any difference in his incarceration as the Soviets when they incarcerated people that were against the state. I don't see any difference in his incarceration than the Syrians arresting people that are protesting their government right now. I don't see... Uh, I mean, he's in there unjustly. The guy was uh, indicted by a grand jury, and it's pretty obvious from the testimony that... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. That uh, the prosecutor brought against him. It was a uh, farce. I mean, they basically, when the jury came, when the grand jury came back and had questions about it, said we don't really see a need to send this guy to jail or to indict him. They just turned to, well, he's dangerous. So instead of going after what the what the accusations were, the accusations turned to his character. Well, he's a dangerous man. He's off the grid. They re- literally, one of the reasons why they said he was dangerous is because he's not on the electrical grid of GVEA. Maybe he's one of them terrorizers, Josh. Say that again, Aaron? I said maybe he's one of them terrorizers. I mean, obviously, anybody who chooses to live off the grid must be, must be a dangerous person. I mean, who, who in their right mind, especially in a place like a rural Alaska, would choose to live in a place where they didn't have their power supplied for them by the government? Well, when, uh, from what I read, it looks like the grand jury was going to not indict and the prosecution came down to the prosecutor came down to this point. You have to let us arrest him, or people will die tonight. Now, what they base that off of is nothing but fear. So we have Mike Anderson, who 
I've known for a couple of years. Dave has known, I think, longer than all of us. And give us, give me your opinion, Dave. I, I would say that Mike is a pacifist in nature. Yeah, he basically. Believes, right. Yeah, he he just wants to you know spend time with his family and kids and two he's little not, kids. Yeah, he doesn't like he doesn't you know go hunting because he doesn't like killing animals. I mean, it's it's ridiculous the the charges that are brought against him. Actually, we should point out that uh, the um, tampering with evidence charge was dropped. They had a warrant and they kicked his door down in the middle of winter, and um, of course, all, you know, his water froze and his wife had to uh, had to get that fixed in the middle of winter. And um, she had to they, move out of her home for a while. She had to move out for a while. Yep. Yeah. And they didn't find anything. They found nothing. Nada. Zero. And uh, he sits in jail. They found out he doesn't live on the grid. They did find that out. That's true. Well, since you've known him the long, okay, he's in there off the testimony of a um, informant who had a felony charge against him and was given a plea deal. If you do this for us, we'll give you a bargain. You yeah, not even he's not, he's not even in there on that guy's testimony. They uh, they uh, the recordings. There's a bunch of phone recordings with uh, other guys who are in jail talking amongst themselves about how they need to get in touch with Mike. Mike is not on any of the recordings that have been released. And the recordings about Michael are well, he, he, he told us that he to told us it. to go fly a kite. Yeah. Right. So now all of this for somebody who's just joining the discussion here. This is about the the Schaefer Cox alleged conspiracy to kill troopers and judges and other people in that two for one murder conspiracy plot. Uh, and now in order for there to be a conspiracy legally, don't you need a certain number of people? What we've been told is that they need they needed to have five people to have this conspiracy charge stick, and Mike Anderson got to be number five, which I think is why they don't want to release him because the then rest of the, the, rest of the case would, would come unraveled. Right. All right. I don't really have. I don't know a whole lot about the case itself. I don't. I've met Schaefer Cox one time. Um, I know Mr. Vernon and his wife. I've known them for a few years. But uh, what they had in mind, what they planned, I have no idea. If it was all contrived, I wouldn't doubt from the the uh, informant. I mean, it showed that the informant was the one that came in with these ideas and was like, hey, let's push this, let's push this. But the point is that Michael Anderson had nothing to do with it. Why was, is he still there? I was pretty good. Actually, the informant's one of my best friends. Was. Was. All right, so, uh, and, and even the informant doesn't know why they arrested Michael Anderson. I mean, if these guys were worried about justice, the political the political system, the prosecutors, the FBI, whoever, if they're worried about justice, why didn't they go to people like David Giesel and say, "What's your? Do you know anything about this guy? What's your opinion of him?" Instead, they take the testimony of nothing, they make something up and throw him in jail. He's been in jail since March. And in our society, supposedly, you're supposed to have the right to a speedy trial. And as, right, as of right now, he's never knowingly given up his right to a speedy trial. And that was past due in July. And they're going to keep him there until next April for a trial. So he'll be in there for over a year. And they don't have, they do not have anything on him. It's a travesty. It's horrible. Yeah, that's, well, that's Shame why they us. dropped. That's why they dropped the charges. They, you know, they had what five search warrants, and uh, and they found nothing at his place. Nada. So if charges have been dropped, what's he in jail for right now? He's in jail on the conspiracy charge. Okay. The charges that would require physical evidence were dropped because they don't have any. Yeah, no, this is what so I love. The, 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 charges, what I love the about charges the conspiracy. That require, yeah, exactly. It's a catch-all. Well, I mean, it, this this to me, this is almost along the lines of the science fiction with uh, that. You, you've seen the movie Minority Report with Tom Cruise? Yes. Where, you know, it's a futuristic society. They decide to go out and start arresting people for crimes that they are going to commit and, get the, and, and prevent the crimes from happening in the first place. And, you know, whether it is a thought crime or whether it is, uh, I mean, talk about something. Basically, that's all this is coming down to is that if you have idle words and you talk about Gee, I'd like to see so and so bite the dust. 
Are you then guilty of conspiracy as well, just simply because you have, of some idle words that came out of your mouth? Should we all go to jail because we knew Michael? Yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Aaron, for that. Uh, I mean, I talked with him just a couple of weeks before he was arrested, and uh, I think actually Schaefer Cox came up because we were talking about his the whole deal where he was not going to go to court over the charge. He missed his court date and whatever, and... Uh, I asked him if he had talked with him, and he said he hadn't even spoken with him for several months and wouldn't have anything to do with him. So why is he in jail? Why have we allowed him to stay in jail? That's the real part. I mean, we're going to rely. I totally believe in the jury system, trial by jury with people that actually know what they're doing on the jury, but I don't feel so good about him staying in jail till next April. Why is that? Aren't you supposed to have the right to... Uh, not only a speedy trial, but a right to a reasonable bail. I went to a couple of his hearings, and the whole time when they were at, talking about he tried to get a bail, he had a bail hearing the whole time. It was just, oh, he's so dangerous. Your Honor, we can't let him go. He's just, look at him. He's so dangerous. This, these, The accusations are so serious. We can't let him go. Well, what about this accusation? You have a free American in jail. You have stripped him totally of all of his liberties on what? What right do you have to take away that man's liberty? I mean, we've gotten to the point where we just, our liberties are just junk. They don't mean anything. They mean absolutely nothing. They not only mean nothing to the government, they mean nothing to us. We sit around, we're like, oh, oh. You read the comments in the news minor, and they trash on all these guys. There's no evidence or anything, but people are saying, oh, I'm glad they're in jail. Good on that. I'm glad they're in there. They're scumbag. But really? Anytime someone is arrested, we should question it anytime when they take when the government takes away someone's liberties it's the most serious thing that they can do to us the not, most not serious when they thing. live off the grid josh then it doesn't except matter. when they live off the grid i know i'm really upset about it our founding fathers would have they talked about this all the time our liberties are so essential if an entity comes and takes your liberties away they better have a darn good reason and something to back it up and it's been five months now, and there's nothing to back it up. They're breaking their own laws to keep him in there. I like how the FBI, the I read a story where the, the lawyers for the group said that, uh, well, the, the wiretapping was against the law. They didn't have a warrant. The state troopers didn't have a warrant. The FBI said, we don't need a warrant. We can do whatever we want. Really? Yeah, thank you, Republican Party, for your stupid Patriot Act. Well, it's also, and you've got to look at it, too, the state prosecutor is the one that's saying that they're going to go ahead and keep him in there, even though they now have evidence that the FBI investigation was illegal. Yep. So, and they're still going to keep him in Yeah, there. exactly. Uh, you know, uh, so many of the questions that arise to me uh, off of this situation, first and foremost, you say that we are allowing him to stay there. The first question is, well, what are we, the collective we, supposed to do? Because I know that if I, as an individual, went down there and tried to get him out, I mean, basically, what it would come down to is that I would have to exert some kind of illegal activity to try to get him out of jail. Well, unfortunately, what we have is uh, society sta status, status in society. If you had some big rock star or something or... Uh just someone who's really popular here in town. Everyone loved, yada, yada, and he got thrown in jail. This thing would be all over the place. I mean, look at uh, Martin Luther King. People would be protesting. They'd be down there going, hey, rah, rah, hell no, let him go, whatever. They, you know, we would be protesting it. We would be up, not in arms. We would be angry about it. There would be talk about it all the time. There would be riots in L.A. All we have is, uh, you know, just some guy, Mike Anderson, who cares? He doesn't have the social status to get people riled about it, which is the sad part. Who cares what his social status is? He's a free man, and he should be a free man. And they have, when they threw him in jail, when they robbed him of his liberty, they're not just taking his. They're violating all of it.